Hi, everyone, and welcome back to our BCBA exam prep series. I'm Katherine Kellogg, and this is week three of our journey through the sixth edition TAS content outline. In our first two weeks, we've covered the philosophical foundations of behaviorism. We've talked about the seven dimensions of ABA, also some of the founding participants in our field. Today, we're diving deeper into the six attitudes of science that really guide our field along with selectionism, pragmatism, and the distinctions between different aspects of behavior analysis. These concepts really are essential for the BCBA exam and set the foundation. The six attitudes of science specifically apply to ABA, but also other fields of scientific experimentation and research. So let's get started. We touched on determinism in the very first video, and this is the first attitudes of science. So some people like to use an acronym to remember this. Dear PP, D-E-E-R-P-P -P is one way to remember the six attitudes of science to be able to list them off. Determinism is the first one. And if you recall, this is really thinking about how the universe is lawful and orderly. So we have a first then. There's a reason why we do what we do. It didn't just happen out of the blue or just become... Um, random. There's always a reason. And it's really our job as analysts to figure out the why. It can be hard to find out the why. That's why we have a lot that goes into it. Data collection, looking for patterns, evaluating antecedent variables and environmental context. So we do all of that to determine and predict what's going to happen in the future. Empiricism is next. This is the belief that knowledge comes from direct observation and data. So think of evidence-based when you hear empiricism. As behavior analysts, we don't rely on what we think. We rely on data and using evidence-based practices. Experimentation is next, and this involves systematically manipulating variables to identify causal relationships. We want to know if we have strong experimental control, then our intervention is effective. And we know that those interventions are responsible for behavior change. Replication is next. When you think of replication, think of repeating, repeating the same procedure, uh, systematic replication or testing the procedures across different people to see how valid they are. Uh, scientific findings must be reproducible to be considered valid. So for example, in ABA, if a token economy system effectively increases on-task behavior or homework completion for one student, we might implement the same procedure with another student to verify its effectiveness across individuals. Parsimony is next. When you hear this, think of simple, the simplest explanation. This one is probably the one that I find myself thinking about the most often in intervention and treatment planning, because this principle really rules out the simplest explanations over more complex ones. So let's just ask ourselves, why is this person behaving the way that they are? Why is this child having a tantrum? Is it really because they're trying to escape the task? Or we need to ask ourselves a more simpler explanation. Are they hungry? Are their basic needs met? Did they have any drastic changes in the environment at home? Did they not sleep well? There's a lot of other things that could be going on that could be simpler to meet the need and simpler explanations before we dive into a more complex treatment. Philosophical doubt is next. This means that scientific knowledge is tentative and open to revision based on new evidence. Very, very important. We have to constantly be remain skeptical, think of healthy skepticism, continue to evaluate the effectiveness of our own interventions. So we don't want to be those BCBAs that are set in their ways, right? We have uh, trauma-informed care, and we have to think about where our field is going and constantly question our practices to make sure we're using the utmost and current research. Continuing education is important, but not just any continuing ed. Select specific topics and listen to marginalized groups and grow your practice, assuming that the uh, field is constantly changing. So the next part, we're going to talk about selectionism, pragmatism, and compare those two a bit. Selectionism is the view that behavior is selected by its consequences. Similar to natural selection and evolution, behaviors that produce reinforcing consequences are more likely to occur again. So for example, when a child initially babbles randomly and certain sounds are reinforced by caregiver attention, 
those sounds occur more frequently over time. The environment has selected those behaviors through their consequences, just as natural selection operates in evolution. Pragmatism is next, and this philosophical position that truth is determined by practical utility. We focus on what works rather than what's theoretically correct or what do we think works. Let's really focus on what is pragmatic and practical. So think of practical here. For example, rather than debating theoretical perspectives, a behavior analyst selects interventions based on their demonstrative effectiveness for the specific client and context. If data show that an intervention produces meaningful behavior change, then um, with all ethics considered, that is what matters most. We have to always consider cost-benefit analysis and ethics. It doesn't mean that we rule out uh, client dignity and well-being first. So that always comes first. But when we're selecting interventions specifically, we want to think about what produces meaningful behavior change with our best interest in the client is first. The last bit that we're going to cover is behaviorism, which is the philosophy of the science of behavior. Experimental analysis of behavior is the basic research on the principles of behavior. So experiment is the research part. ABA is the applied, so the application of these principles that have already been tested. And professional practice is the service delivery guided by behavior analysis. So behavior analysts are at that tier of the professional practice piece. In summary, these components work together to form our complete field. For instance, the basic research on reinforcement schedules, EAB, informs how we design token economies in clinical settings, which is ABA, which is delivered according to ethical guidelines or professional practice, all grounded in a philosophy that behavior is determined by environmental variables, behaviorism. So I hope that sums up those. Uh, I'm going to also post a video with practice questions on these that you can check out. Be sure to subscribe below so that you can get notified for these weekly video updates and follow the course throughout. And if you have any other questions or want to add information that helps you remember these concepts or follow-up questions, please comment below and I'd be happy to touch on those later. Happy studying!